Hi, I'm Marlo from Wild Food UK. It's the uh, 13th of September today and mushrooms have started to come up everywhere. It's 2022 when I'm doing this video, by the way. Uh, we've had a very dry year and we've had quite a lot of rain in the last few weeks. And the, the grassland species of mushrooms in particular that would normally have come up in August, uh, they're all starting to fruit right now. So we're in a glut of field mushrooms and other grassland species at the moment. The woods seem to be taking a little bit longer to, uh, to come back though. The mushrooms in the woods seem to not be fruiting quite yet in any sort of prolific numbers. And I think that might be because the trees need to recover a little bit before uh, from the drought that we've had before the mushrooms that are associated with them uh, through their mycorrhizal relationships uh, start to get the nutrition that they need to be able to fruit. But grassland species, that's what to go looking for at the moment. And down here, I've got one of those, which um, is actually growing in my garden. And uh, it prompted me to do this video because this is um, a sort of group of mushrooms that I've neglected, to be honest, because this is a channel for uh, beginner foragers. So I've tried to cover as much of the easy stuff as I can, but for some reason, the puffballs have, uh, have not really made it onto the channel, apart from obviously the giant puffball. Um, this one here is the, the meadow puffball, uh, Lycoperdum pretense. But the um, thing with the puffball group is that they're a really good group for beginners because if you know you've got one of the puffballs and it's white, then it's an edible mushroom. It really is as simple as that. There are a couple of edible brown ones. Uh, there's only really one toxic one, uh, the dusky puffball, and that's a, a dark one. But even that isn't that toxic. It's just gonna give you some probably nasty gastric upset at worst. Um, but the rest of them, the white ones, like this one here, are all edible. Um, the way to tell that you've got a puffball is to cut it in half though. So we'll just take this biggest one here. You can see with the meadow puffball, they kind of grow like a little, almost like a bread loaf, I suppose, in their shape. No uh, very clear stem, but there is a, a sort of hint at a stem there with the wider structure on top, but the whole mushroom is one structure. There's no sign of any gills. Um, there's no sign of any spikes or, or pores or sponge. Um, you can see it's a puff ball. And the way to tell that you've got a puff ball is to cut it in half, because there are some lookalikes I'm gonna show you in just a second. And if you've got one of the true puff balls, it should be white and spongy all the way through, like a bit of marshmallow, nice and soft and spongy. Now that tells me I've got a puffball. If this was starting to yellow on the inside in any part of the mushroom, then I wouldn't eat it. You only want to eat puffballs when they're young and white all the way through. Um, so any sign of yellowing, leave that mushroom behind. Don't put it in your food uh, because it could give you a little bit of gastric upset. But while they're white, and spongy all the way through, they're perfectly edible. Unfortunately, they're not the tastiest of mushrooms, I've got to be honest. They're one that goes into mixed mushroom dishes for me. Uh, they do take in marinades though, because of that sponginess. So you can marinate them and make them taste a little bit better. Uh, they're a pretty plain tasting mushroom though. Now I'm gonna use this as a little chance to show you a very good book available from our website for $14.99. And I'm gonna use it to uh, show you the lookalikes because here we've got uh, the common puffball, another nice white one. This is what they look like when they get older. And here's a brown one, which I do eat. That's the stump puffball. But if you wanna stay safe as a real beginner, just stick to the white ones. There's our giant puffball and there's one that's gone entirely to spore. That's what they do. There's a, another type now. It's the mosaic puffball. Now onto the lookalikes, because there are some lookalikes for the puffballs that you want to rule out. And this is one of them. This is our earth ball. Now, most earth balls, when you cut them in half, they're dark in the middle. 
There is one that uh, we do find in the New Forest on our courses down there actually and in a few other parts of the UK that stays white on the inside um, a lot longer uh, but they're firmer in texture and as you can see the skin of them is different to the skin of a puffball. That's why these get the nickname, the uh, poison pigskin puffballs. They'll make you quite sick if you eat them. They're not deadly though. Here's another lookalike. This is our stinkhorn and it grows from an egg. And at that stage, you could mistake it for a puffball. But if you cut it in half, you see that structure with a stinkhorn. And then onto the most important lookalikes really. Uh, which are our Amanitas and uh, the death cap being the most notorious of those. Now, here's our death cap. And again, like the stinkhorns, the Amanitas grow from an egg-like structure. Now, again, if you cut that in half, you'll find uh, that it's got a different texture to a puffball. Um, and you should be able to discern the beginnings of a mushroom, which as you can see there is going to break through that egg. So obviously you don't want to eat death caps. You don't want to eat common earth balls. Uh, you can eat stinkhorns if you want to. Um, they taste a little bit like radish, but I prefer radishes to be honest. Um, but the puff balls, as long as you've got that marshmallowy sponge all the way through, you, and it's a white puffball, then you've got an edible mushroom. It really couldn't be much easier. Just rule those other ones out. And uh, if you need any backup to do that, get the book. <laughs> and if you want to find out more, go to www.wildfooduk.com.